Hello, everybody. We're coming to the final, to the final event, to the closing session. And I'd like to start with something I'm copying from the last event in, in Holland, from What the Heck, which I found really useful. Um, because you know a lot of us, but we know almost nothing from you, which is probably quite good. But we really like to uh, know where you're from. I know this is not really statistics, it's just like rough. But if you could just please raise your hand whenever you think that one of the requests on the slides applies to you. So our first question is, where are you from? If you're from Germany, raise your hand now. Okay. What about other German-speaking areas? Austria, Switzerland, it's your time. Okay. Europe. <laughs> Hackers. <laughs> Not only once. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Logic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> excluding German speaking areas, please. Okay. And Eastern Europe, excluding <laughs> everything else. Okay, didn't see anything. Did anybody see anything? Here we are. Show, sure, yeah, you're alive. Okay, we, we need more from you. Yeah, we, we definitely need more people from Eastern Europe all over. Tell them, please. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, here we are, North America. Mm. Wow. Quite a few. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> and now the rest of the world. Here, there, there. Oh, you were twice, huh? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Next question is, where have you been? I'm not asking which countries you've been. We want to know, which Chaos Communication Congress have you attended? And, um, <laughs> let's count. Who attended the first Chaos Communication Congress? 1984. Oh. <laughs> Old school, beware of these guys. Two, second. Third. <laughs> Andy, you can just stand up. <laughs> okay, I'm counting now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, where are we now? 1990? 1994? Uh, mm, yeah. Um, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We are now in Berlin, Haus am Park. 16, the first one that actually had the C3 moniker. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, <laughs> and 23, who is coming next year? Great. Who was at the first camp, 1999? 
who was at Hackers at Large 2001 in Holland. The second camp, 2003. What the heck? Okay, thank you very much. So where are we going from here? I think in the future, the Congress has to gain some focus, and one of these focuses is content. We already did this. We started last year totally changing the process on how we are designing the conference program. And I think we did pretty well so far. Also, we need more focus on projects. We already had quite a few, and um, you can see them. It's Wikipedia here, it's mesh networking there, and all the other stuff. You can't really name them. But what we want you to know is that we are really interested in getting all these actively working projects here to the Congress to show their work and uh, show what they're doing. So this should definitely be one way we should follow. Also, and we always try to do this for a couple of years now, we want to integrate other scenes. I mean, there are many people out there who are not that much into computers, that not so much into computing, they're probably not that much into technology in general, but they share the, basic, the same basic ideals. They share the basic vision of where we all want to go to and especially where we not want to go to. And I think we have to find a way to get more of these guys. Like the VJs and the DJs down there, it's just the same breed. And I think also we need to focus on networking the community even more. Congress is probably a very good place to do this. There are other events out there that are doing a perfect job as well. And this is definitely our way. And of course, we have to broaden our focus beyond Europe. And we're starting this, we've been doing this for some years now, establishing English content, being, getting international. And all of you of North America and the rest of the world, go out and tell them to come here, please. <laughs> so, there have been quite a few discussions here, lots of lectures, lots of talks, lots of really interesting stuff. There was a single one that was sort of sticking out of everything because it really moved people. There were a lot of hot discussions around this uh, in many areas. And the question was, did we lose the war? And I'd like to ask Rob to say a few things about this. Um. We received, uh, I received more feedback on that lecture than I had on any other feedback ever, on any other lecture ever, I'm, I'm confused now. Um, uh, lots of people uh, uh, were touched by it, felt, uh, felt woken up, and lots of people uh, also felt very confused, very depressed, and lots of people sort of bothered us about the choice of the word war. We didn't lose a war, we lost a battle. And I was ba basically um, thinking about this a lot and, and, and presenting my argumentation for calling it a war, which is that it wouldn't be very believable if we called it a battle. Because we've always said, or at least I have been saying for the past 20 years, that given a state with the possibilities of, that we're facing right now, given the state that can see every person, every car, every dime, every telephone call, every communication, uh, given that state, we would end up in a situation where it would be very hard to turn back from anything bad happening. Um, and we've always said that if, that if we allow that to happen, we are screwed. So dictatorships happen. Dictatorships happen. You can put on the next slide now. And uh, basically our point has been you can't stop certain areas of the world or even large areas of the world of rolling into dictatorship, you can just make sure that dictatorship doesn't have the means that we see being created right now. Um, we're entering a situation which doesn't have historic parallels and we wanted to make sure that this was clear. We tried to make sure this did not happen and it did happen. 
And it's actually probably more important that we did stop this from happening than stopping dictatorship, because we're pretty sure that that cannot be done. Um, there will be more wars. In fact, there, there's a more important war coming up. And if people don't realize that they're fighting wars to begin with, they have no chance of winning. So maybe if we all realize that we're fighting wars, we have a chance of winning the next one. Um, the outside world is very confused when hackers say we're giving up. That's how it's been conceived. I mean, people that weren't here in this lecture just read the title and thought we were giving up. Half of our, our lecture was about alternatives. What can we still do? How does the world change? But lots of people haven't gotten this, and the media have reported on it as hackers are giving up. My thinking is this is actually a good thing. Because in the outside world, we have this magic button in our hands. The outside world sees everything going to hell, but they also have this feeling that hackers can fix it. Well, everything is bad, and the government can see everything we do, but at least we have the hackers. Um, and this, as much as I enjoy the sort of Robin Hood heroism that goes with that, um, and I think most of you do, uh, this is not very productive because it gives the rest of the world a, a reason to sigh, to breathe a sigh of relief and think, oh, oh whew, at least we have the hackers. And we need to impress on these people that we don't have that magic button. We don't have it in our hands. We cannot just press and the whole world will stop being a dictatorship. Governments will fall apart and democracy will happen all of a sudden. Um, and as pe if people understand this, they will know that they have a responsibility for themselves. We can help. In fact, we can be very, very important helps in the battle to make sure that dictatorship with the current means that governments have does never happen again. Um, so I think that is the hard task, is to hold on to democracy like there is no tomorrow. And with that, I would like to pass it back to Tim. <clears throat> okay, now for the funny part. Statistics. I know you're waiting for it. You get it. Let's start with the change log. There have been a few things that we changed from last year to this year. And I'd like to know if this worked out. First of all, and most obvious, we had four days. Has this been a good idea? Okay. <laughs> Who votes for five? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who volunteers? Mm -hmm. Okay, I get back to that. I don't think we're going to make it next year. Um, but keep in mind, and I'm going to talk about this a bit more. This is a lot of work. Anyway. Um, we had the smoking policy change this time, and I think... <laughs> yeah, I think that the best thing about it is that we didn't... We had a, a huge discussion on this. You can't imagine how huge this discussion was. Uh, and long and long and long and um, in the end it was pretty clear we had to do something but there was a uh, there were many opinions floating around on how to actually achieve this and of course the first thing was ah, we have to set up rules you know but we sort of decided not to do that we more or less put up recommendations and um, I think it worked pretty well so the good thing is that once we all agree on something, we can really do things without establishing laws and, and all this stuff. It just works. That's cool. Thank you for that. Um, also, well, last Congress was a bit crowded, so we decided to have a more relaxed hack center layout. People were opting for oh, running around all the time, no seats, la la la. Uh, so we decided to. Um, have a much more relaxed hack center layout. I think it worked out quite well, thanks to uh, Stephanie in that respect, who did 
a lot of these things and had the initial idea for this. And And we had this self-organizing open workshop area. I uh, haven't really checked back how well this worked. I, I, I know it's been quite problematic here and there, but I, in general, I think these self-organizing things have to, um, yeah, we need more of this. I, we have a certain limit here in terms of rooms and everything, but um, in general, I think it works out. Also, the lightning talks have been very enlightening, and um, we're going ahead with these kind of things. Sorry? And we have doubled the price. And we have, no, we haven't doubled the price. We have increased the price because we had to. Um, many people don't imagine how, how much this costs. And even more people can't imagine how much it would cost if we were doing this on a standard way. This, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to that. But in terms of price, um, you just have to take what you need in order to do it, because otherwise we're spending money on this. And the Congress is not only on financing the Congress itself, it's also on financing us doing it, organizing it, and also putting money into projects within the CCC. So that's where the money is heading, and it's not that much. It's not like huge amounts of money getting into it. So it's more or less something over the year. And it doesn't really pay to hold up a huge infrastructure. There is no huge infrastructure. This Congress is organized by basically three people, and they have been working their ass off. Really. <laughs> but I'm getting back to this once more. Anyway, first, have a look at a conference program. So we changed that as well. You've seen it, four rooms, bigger rooms, therefore. And, well, good thing is, 150 lectures we had, only three lectures went unplanned. So, this was pretty good, there were certain reasons. One of the speakers didn't get a visa. Well, we could have done something about it if he wouldn't have told us, like, two days ago, before the event started, there's no way of, like, just wasn't possible. And there were no problems. Some of the speakers were just stuck on the autobahn and didn't get any further. And one speaker is still missing an action. We have no clue where he is. I mean, it's <laughs> <clears throat> the good thing is that always when there was a dropout, there was a volunteer standing up saying, ah, I can do a talk. <laughs> Maybe that's a model for, for the Congress in a way. And, and I didn't really point to it in the beginning, but I really want to point to it now. In the far plan, in the schedule of the Congress, on the description for each event, there's a link which brings you to the proper feedback form where you can fill in the feedback. Uh, it's just like some numbers, la la la. Uh, if you've seen a lecture and you think you have an opinion on it, how it went, please use it and fill out the feedback form. This is very valuable for us. We need it because... Yeah, it works. I'm getting back to that as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just like, okay, we can com you can complain about the wireless LAN, but first f fill the feedback form, please. <laughs> Once again, we had this impressive phone network. This time... <laughs> Uh, this time we had 560 registered phones and still no known hacks so far. What about DECT? Is not interesting enough? <laughs> <laughs> it's digital, you know? <laughs> digital. So, um, yeah. I wouldn't say they, they'd love to have more hacks, but it's pretty disappointing there's nothing happening on that area. There's more to the world than just TCP IP, you know? The Hacker Jeopardy obviously made the sex hotline very popular. <laughs> the 
That's good. I, I think we should put more organizational questions inside Hacker Jeopardy and probably have it the first day so everybody knows about it. You know, the, the, the 23C3 category. Where is, where do you find? That's good. I love it. Uh, and we have a new phone labyrinth record. One of the angels actually made all 50 levels in two hours and 17 minutes. <laughs> the network. <clears throat> I told you, I'm getting back to this. The media is wrong, don't believe the hype. This was by far the best network ever we had on the Congress. It really worked. We had quite a huge channel outside. It was more than 10 gigabits. Nobody can really say how fast it could have been. Um, because, uh, well, I'll show you the numbers. We didn't really make use of it. But imagine 10 gigabit per second. You know how much this is? This is more connectivity than Africa has. <laughs> And what's good for us is bad for them, because they definitely need more of that. <laughs> I, I, this, this, is really worth, this is really worth another talk. Uh, as far as I know, like, like half of the bandwidth that is available is filled by spam. Nothing else. So what did we use? We actually used that much. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Use more bandwidth. <laughs> Maybe that's what, what Rob was relating to. We're not, not using our channels enough. We can do more. We really can. So we had working IP version 4 and version 6 networking from day zero this time. Something like in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's also a first. Yeah? And uh, this Congress, um, maybe some of you have attended the, the network talk, then you probably know it even better. But we're always an autonomous system. I love that term. And we have five uplink carriers distributing it. So we're not just like an end user. We're part of the network. And that's very important. And so this means we had a working wired and we had a working wireless LAN. I know that some of you are now starting to complain, saying like, oh, I opened my laptop and it didn't work. <laughs> so what? The real wonder is that it's working at all. Because it's <laughs> totally <laughs> impossible. It, 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 it's, it's totally impossible. Yeah? Many of us, including like 99% of the network crew said something like, ah, it's not going to work. It never worked. Yeah? You know? Why do we try, even try? Yeah? It doesn't work. <laughs> we're, we're actually thinking about just like, giving up on this and, um, well, just like, if you know better, then do it yourself. Uh, why not collaborate on this on a anarchistic level or something like this. But we made another try, we had new technology, and it worked out pretty well. So most of the stuff, and I really need to point this out this time because they've been helping us a lot. The, the backbone structure, switches, many things um, have been provided by Hewlett Packard, Procraft stuff, and they've loads. Yeah, they, they've given us loads of hardware. This is really something that no other uh, event can afford. It would have been impossible to rent this. Yeah? We, were, uh, we already have high costs just, just to pay the insurance for it. Yeah. <laughs> like millions. And yeah, thanks to them for giving that.
stops working. My cool device stops working. Um, the wireless stuff was provided by Aruba Networks. This was new and it really works. And we had also had um, machines from Juniper and we had machines from, from Force 10. Um, I hate it. And the uplink was provided by Versatel, Cogen, KPN, Telia, and Dhosting. So they were, we've been connected to all of them at the same time. That's where the good performance is coming from. Okay. Now I have to <laughs> now the technology. Yeah, could you please switch off your Bluetooth? <laughs> oh, I hate it. <clears throat> I think I have to reboot this. Okay, uh, the hacker ethics hotline. Um, uh, you know this existed, right? We had actually one pre-strike request. And the good news is we could help. <laughs> and no damage occurred. So the hotline could actually prevent from bad things happening. This is a good, good, really good news. And um, <clears throat> there was also one post-strike request. <clears throat> um, but... It was just a hacked laptop at 22 C3. So, um, yeah. I think this really, really worked out. Which doesn't mean there were other digital incidents <clears throat> this time again. But you can relax. It's nothing really serious. And it's really artistic this time as well. I love it. You see the logo? Okay, let's see if I can reconnect here successfully. Um, another good news, this time we have put quite a lot of effort in improving the recording situation, which hasn't been that perfect in recent years. <clears throat> so we had much more gear this time, you've seen it. Video mixers, cameras, stuff. Uh, many people working on it, and most videos are available now in the medium quality versions as a stream. <laughs> and the higher quality MPEG 4 and MPEG 2 versions will be available soon. <laughs> I'm quite confident on this. Um, we we'll have to see. So. Ah, it works again. This is 400 gigabytes of data. Yeah, and we're going to drop it on your head soon. <laughs> and very special thanks to the group of uh, FEM, IFAO at Ilmenau. They're doing recordings there at the university, and they helped us a lot with the gear and a lot with um, creative personnel and uh, stuff and staff. So thanks for that. So, here's the number you're all waiting for. Um, some of you are waiting for a different number. I'm not going to give it you this time. 3,000 visitors we had is a bit less than last year, but I think the overall situation was much more relaxed, so this is a good thing. We sort of found our, our way now in dealing with this building, which is really cool. Um, and the news reported on three dozen women and I was thinking about, what are they talking about? I mean, that's just not right, is it? And then I knew. They only counted the speakers. <laughs> and the CERT, our medical team, just reports 110 minor incidents. Actually, we're still looking for any major incident at this Congress. <clears throat> uh, 
In other news, <laughs> somebody placed 42 dried sardines in the hug center. <laughs> and we've seen them. It's three people in black. <laughs> so if you have any news on this, we'd like to take back in time. But well, thanks for all the fish. <laughs> and we've been hacked. Yes, for the first time, we've been hacked. We've been hacked by the impersonator. There was actually a speaker showing up who was somebody else. And we didn't know, you know, we had no clue. So he actually managed to get his talk under another name of another speaker we knew, and actually we knew that person as well. So this is a big question for you. You have to find out yourself who it was. <laughs> because he didn't tell. So let's go to the clapping session. There's a lot of clap. Most important, always the first, the Chaos Angels who are rocking the boat here. 150 people helping out. They, they, we have slightly stressed them this time because four days, I mean, that's just more time to spend on, on working and we're a bit less angels. Think about what you can contribute to the next Congress because we really need the help of angels. Nothing would run here, nothing. Uh, this is still a volunteer driven event and um, otherwise it would just cost us millions and it wouldn't be the same. So we need more, more angels. And then thanks to the Pocknock, to the Phone and Network Operations Center. Yeah, I'm, I'm especially happy that this was sort of the first uh, Netherlands-Germany cooperation. So um, we now finally join forces. That's really cool. I really think this is the way to go. Um, because then it just works better. We've seen it. I mean, that's really cool. <clears throat> yeah, I also already noted the video crew, but they're doing a really good job here. Working with that. And of course, also thanks to the speakers who have traveled a long way. Yeah. Keep in mind, speakers don't get paid if they're doing a contribution here. And uh, we're trying everything to support them. Uh, I hope we did. And I hope you're all coming back with new information and new material. <clears throat> and the BCC. <clears throat> this is so important. The BCC. I mean, this is a very costly, huge, you know, everything modern conference center and in no way is there any chance for us to be here because we just couldn't pay it. They are providing significant support. They have been talking with us and for months and they're providing us every support possible. And they're giving it for a very fair, very, very super fair price. And uh, I think this deserves a very special thank you to the team of the BCC. We, 
we are, by the way, the only event that's using up to 120% of the available space. <laughs> I, I, I mean it, yeah? we, we actually use space that nobody can even rent. Yeah, that's, it's just not possible. And of course, I named most of them of the um, important one, but thanks to everybody who contributed in any form, financial support and so on. Just thanks, it's really needed and really helpful. Yeah, and this is probably yeah, the most important thing. The organization of this event, I told you before, this, this event is impossible. It's totally impossible, and I really mean it. I'm always totally surprised when I see it happening, but if you're like six months ahead, and you look at all the problems that arise, it's totally impossible. So many voices to coordinate, so many chaos and confusion and everything. And uh, I know that, that many of you know that I've been in this for a while. This time I've stepped back a little. And so the main work was uh, done by a new team that really performed very well. And I was uh, one specially point to Henriette, Fukami and Julia who did 90% of the work this time to give it. Where are you? Yeah, and you know, if you start lists, just another clap to you, the one we forgot to mention. I don't know. This, uh... Uh, let's rave about organization a bit. <clears throat> I already said it. This Congress is totally impossible to organize. It's just not possible. Just to give you a glimpse. There are 5,000 emails coming in and getting out just to talk about the conference program and all the other issues. 5,000. Now divide this by three and divide this by months. And you get up with a load like five, six emails that everybody has to deal with any day, every day, like including Sunday, Saturday, and Monday, and Pungen Day, and you know. It's really a lot. Two years ago, one and a half year ago, we started to write our own software just to be capable of doing this. Uh, this turned out to be a really cool project. We named it Pentabar for undisclosed reasons. And um, <clears throat> we first, we, uh, last year we wrote the first prototype that actually worked pretty well uh, in PHP. And then this time we um, rewrote it. In, in, in Ruby on Rails so that it's uh, much more open for change, I think, in, in the future. Uh, i really like to point you to that. First of all, thanks to Sven. Uh, Sven Klem, who did 99% of the programming work for this. Uh, he's been working full-time six months on this for just this year, and he did most of the work last year as well. Thanks again. <laughs> I think we already made it to the first uh, link in Google, so you should no problem finding it. If you're into Ruby a bit, and if you're interested in doing events anyway, check it out, have a look. Maybe we can do something great with it. It's still in its infancy in a way, but it made, us, made it possible to, to organize this, the conference program mainly. And you've seen all the printouts and uh, the uh, online versions of it, the online calendar and, and so on. That's all coming out of this software. And I want to urge you to start preparing for the next Congress now. We really need your support and we can need as much as possible. And if you're really thinking uh, about helping out in a way, we can really need more volunteers. 
I'm not only talking about angels. I'm not only talking about helping out here. We can need more people joining the organization team of this event. There's a lot to learn, really a lot, more than you can think of. And uh, it's very interesting. It's totally exhausting. It's totally underpaid, but it's really cool. <laughs> and Berlin. <laughs> Berlin is, by the way, a really nice city. Yeah. So if you've got a month spare, just come earlier. Any, anything will help. Yeah? You don't have to do everything. It's just like hanging out here in Berlin. Uh, this goes especially to you from North America. Yeah? So just like, <laughs> wow. Okay, some uh, organizational notes on, uh, on the shutdown here, just uh, that you have. We need to dismantle the Hug Center at 10, and everything is going out uh, pretty soon. Um, so make, make sure that you have all your stuff uh, with you, and, and also please try to clean your neighborhood as well. Uh, don't say it's not mine, just take it and, and, and bring it to the proper places, garbage, and so on. Um, because now that we've extended the Congress one day more, we're pretty on a tight schedule dismantling everything. I hope it will work out fine. There will be, I also already mentioned it in the opening, some kind of lost and found service. People always drop the weirdest things, uh, but we're not keeping it forever because it's just too much usually. Be quick in, 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 in responding. Uh, those that are staying at the gym, uh, this is still open tonight. So if, you don't, if you're still looking for a place to stay, um, this is uh, the option. You have to leave tomorrow at 12, uh, and if you can, please help a bit with the cleanup. There's not much to do. It's just like a bit. Congress is not over. There's going to be the after-hour party. So if you're still in Berlin, just move over to the Seabase space station. Uh, if you don't know where it is, ask at the info desk, ask most of the people know, know where it is. It's just like a 10 minutes walk from here and we're going to have a cool party with the Visual Berlin guys who made the music and the visuals down in the art and beauty area. Some final notes. <clears throat> if you can help now with cleanup, please do. Fukami is over here, just um, get to him and ask what can be done. Um, just come to us right here after, after the talk. Any help is really ap appreciated. We still have a final bunch of proceedings left, so you can get your copy at, at the info desk. And of course, oh, uh, fuck, I forgot to bring this, the CDs. I apologize. <laughs> ah, no, I didn't. No, I forgot, but they didn't. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, there's a really cool comic on PDF the, um, here by these cool guys from Italy, Roberto and Fabio, and they brought <laughs> CDs with them. Okay, Honkhase is going to distribute these CDs to you. Right now. So, that's all there is. Goodbye. See you next year at the 23rd Chaos Communication Congress.